Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I'm going to talk you through how to mimic a build that I used to complete a speedrun challenge of Elden Ring where I had to complete the maximum level of new game difficulty as quickly as possible. Just so you know, the game does go up to new game plus 99, but the difficulty levels stop increasing at new game plus 7. I had to complete every new game as quick as possible and only using this one build and I will come on to why this build specifically was so effective, especially for the later new games later on in this video. Please note this isn't the best choice of build for a fresh run, as some of the components that you need to complete the build are very, very late on in the game. And without the whole build, you will be very weak, which made the first run actually the most challenging of the lot. However, the good news is, if you do want to mimic this build and use it for yourself, that because this was a speed run, almost every single item is very quickly and easily accessible, so it won't require you to trawl through loads of optional areas or NPC questlines if you don't want to. I'll talk you through the basics of how this build actually works now, then we'll review each of the components in depth and where to acquire them all. The key component to this build is the Ash of War Black Flame Tornado. And this is because the majority of the damage that it deals is percentage based, meaning you will melt bosses on New Game Plus 7 just as quickly as you do on New Game Plus 2, for example. This can only be applied to certain weapons, it is quite a niche Ash of War, and you want to apply it to something with very high faith scaling, because the damage of the Black Flame itself, which will be your primary damage output, scales purely with faith. So let me just address because a few people have probably already picked up on the fact that you can actually get this skill really early on in the game as it is the inherent ability of the Godskin Peeler which is dropped by the Godskin Apostle in the Windmill Village. However, even though the weapon itself is very good, it's a really poor option for using the Black Flame Tornado because it has no faith scaling. So the Black Flame Tornado on the Godskin Peeler will do very minimal damage when compared to applying this Ash of War to a different weapon. And you won't get this Ash of War separately until you defeat the Godskin Duo at the Crumbling Faramazula. It is at this point that you will be able to apply it to a weapon of your choice. Along with this, to maximise the fact that we'll be putting loads of points into Faith, we also want a maxed out seal, and we're going to be using a few different Faith spells to make us even more powerful. You'll see that I'm using the Gravelstone seal, because it boosts Dragon Cult incantations, making our Lightning Spear very, very powerful, so that we have a ranged option if we need it. But any seal really will work, because our primary buff is Flame Grant Me Strength because it will increase our fire damage, meaning that the Black Flame Tornado deals even more damage. We've also got the Blessing of the Erd Tree and the Lord's Divine Fortification, just to make us even more tanky and give us a passive HP regen buff. But these are optional and I quite often forget to use them. Now I'll play out the Godskin Duo fight in the background, whilst I talk you through how to use this build, then we'll look at the rest of the individual components and help you put it together yourself. But firstly, I just want to give an absolutely huge shout out and thank you to every single one of our members over on Patreon. You are all absolutely amazing. It truly means the world to me. You are a huge part of the reason that this channel is able to grow and that videos like this are able to exist. So thank you so much. And I do try and increase the offering on Patreon whenever I can. So especially to those of you at higher tiers, I hope you enjoy the exclusive merchandise that you already have. And please get excited because more will hopefully be on the way soon. And now the reason I say this build actually isn't that great for your first playthrough and for the lower new game plus is ironically for the same reason why it is so good in the later new games. Pretty much every single bit of damage is percentage based, meaning the easiest boss at the start of the game is going to take the same amount of time to die as the Elden Beast. And no, I am not joking. I'm actually going to cut away from the Godskin duo fight for a minute and show you me versus Big Mama Grail. You can see here, every use of the Black Flame Tornado is doing over 13,000 damage to her. Yet, if I was to use this on a very, very low level enemy, it would deal no more than maybe 500 to 1,000. And obviously, the more new games you complete, the more runes enemies are going to drop. Meaning you can have an insanely massive health pool, you can wear tankier armor, 
so you're actually more and more resilient and versatile as the new games go on, whilst dealing the same amount of damage. So you will actually find new games 5, 6 and 7 are just as easy, if not easier, than new games 1 to 4 were. So the good news is, if you can beat the game just once with this build, you can beat it an endless amount of times. And that's what makes this so powerful for a specific challenge like this, where you want to max out the game and 100% beat it. Not just beat it once, but beat it on all seven difficulties because not many people can say they've done that. So should you yourself want to embark on this challenge one day, this is an absolutely fantastic way to do it. Now that I've explained why this build is actually so damn powerful, let's back it up and go in depth and show you the stats, show off the armor and the talismans, etc., and help you craft this build for yourself. Okie dokie, so let's start with the most important thing first. My personal favorite weapon to apply the Black Flame Tornado to is the Knight Rider Glaive. And this is dropped by the Knight's Cavalry wandering the road between the East Rhea Lucaria Gate and Bellum Church. Once you've got this glaive, you then want to use it to apply the Black Flame Tornado Ash of War. And as I mentioned previously, you cannot get that until you defeat the Godskin Duo boss inside the Dragon Temple at the Crumbling Farum Azula. Next up, we have the seal. Pretty much all the spells we use aren't really reliant on one seal or another, but just so that we do have a slightly more powerful ranged option, I recommend the gravel stone seal because it will increase the damage output of lightning spear. And this is dropped by one of the two Lanedale knights that will attack you when you're outside of the fortified manor in the center of Lanedale royal capital. It's dropped by the spear wielding knight who is supported by the archer just above. That's all there is for the weapons. In regards to the armor, you basically just want to use any big tanky set. Because this was a speed run, I just wore Radagon set because it's very easily accessible and fairly early on in the game. However, the set I believe has the absolute best weight to defense ratio is the Veterans set. So if you do want to make your way to Castle Sol and defeat Commander Nile, then you can purchase his set from Finger Reader Enya in the round table hold. The veteran set is definitely the one I recommend if you want to absolutely min-max this build. I already mentioned them briefly, but next I'll show you the spells. The most important one is Flame Grant Me Strength, which is also one of the easiest to get. It's round the back of Fort Gale in Kaelid on a body between two flame chariots. You can literally just run up, grab it, and run away again. Next up, we've got the Blessing of the Erd Tree, which is that HP regen buff. And this is found at the Queen's Bedchamber in Lanedale Royal Capital, just before you fight Morgoth. And finally, we've got the Lord's Divine Fortification. This one is only useful for certain fights, but it is basically required for Radagon and the Elden Beast, because it will increase the holy damage negation for you and your allies by 60%. So it is absolutely invaluable to taking far reduced damage from both Radagon and the Elden Beast. And this can be purchased at the Twin Maiden Husks after defeating Gideon. There is another earlier way to get this, but it does require you to defeat Melania, the Blade of Mikula, which I was most certainly not going to do during a speedrun attempt. And then last but not least, we've got the Lightning Spear. And this can be purchased from either Brother Corin or the Turtle Pope after giving either of them the Dragon Cult Prayer Book. This prayer book is dropped in Eastern Lyurnia by a Lanedale Knight patrolling just south of the artist's shack. That is it for your spells, your weapons, and your armor. Next, we'll move on to the talismans, and finally, I will show off the stats for you. One other thing I should mention quickly, actually. Did you know that you can kill Kenneth Height and that he drops a golden seed when you do so? Normally, I would not be an advocate for killing NPCs in any FromSoft game, and obviously, if you're going to mimic this build, you won't necessarily be constrained to the same restrictions as me. But Kenneth Height does drop a golden seed, and I needed to get as many of them as quickly and easily as possible so I didn't have to go too far off the beaten path. And talking about murdering NPCs, let's now look at the talismans. As you'll see, I do have the Warrior Jar Shard, which is the lesser version of the Shard of Alexander, and will boost the attack power of skills. As you've probably guessed from the lead up to this segment, you get this by murdering Iron Fist Alexander. Obviously, my recommendation is to complete his questline and get the super-powered version Shard of Alexander, because that will make the Black Flame Tornado do even more damage. But as I needed to get this build done as quickly as possible, I settled for the Warrior Jar Shard. 
Next up, we've got the Erd Tree's Favor plus two. That is very, very late on in the game when you go back to the capital of Ash in the arena with three putrid tree spirits. Before that point, I'd actually recommend Radagon's Saw Seal, which is on the bottom level of Fort Faroth. Next, we have got the Halig Drake Talisman. Again, just boosting that holy damage reduction to help us with certain enemies and bosses. You'll see I haven't got the plus one or the plus two version because both of them require you to go through optional areas and the plus zero version still gives you 13% extra resistance whereas plus one and plus two only increase that to 17 and 20 respectively. So in the grand scheme of things and especially when using the Lord's Divine Fortification the plus zero is pretty damn effective. And finally, we have got the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two for vastly increased physical damage negation. And this is found in the crumbling Faramazula, looted from a corpse on a floating chunk of debris in the northern section between the Dragon Temple Lift and the Dragon Temple Rooftop Sites of Grace. And I would just like to call out as well, even though the Black Flame Tornado skill does do multiple hits in a row, it does not add stacks towards effects of talismans such as the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia or Millicent's Prosthesis. So that's why we haven't included talismans like that in our build. For the Spirit Ashes, of course, we're using the Mimic Tear Ashes plus 10 so that we can have two of us both spamming Black Flame and absolutely melting bosses even when you're at the new game plus 7 Elden Beast with about 100,000 health. And last but not least, let's have a quick review of the stats. You basically want to pump most of your stats into Faith and Vigor. You will need 18 strength to be able to two-hand the Knight Rider Glaive and use the Black Flame Tornado, but you can get it up to 26 if you want so you can one-hand it, and you'll need 10 dexterity as that is the base attribute requirement. Apart from that, you want a little bit of mind so that you don't need too many FP flasks. Then you want around 35 endurance so you can wear a nice heavy armor set and pump the rest of your stats fairly evenly into faith and vigor to make sure you're an absolute powerhouse, both in terms of your health bar and your damage output. And that is how I beat Elden Ring on New Game Plus 99. You now have all the tools to be able to do so yourself. Go forth, Tarnished, and good luck. And with that, all that is left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.